Hey, this is Steve Dickerson. I'm a local anesthesiologist in Nashville now for 16 years, running for state senate in the 20th okay. district, which is in Davidson County. Yeah, I want to tell you a little bit about me, and then a little bit about my family, and then uh, answer some of the questions that Mr. Harris has posed to us. As I said, I'm a uh, physician who's been practicing now in, in Nashville. I've got a well, it used to be a small business, but actually Jones now a medium-sized business with about 100 employees. And I ran two years ago against Douglas Henry in the 21st district, and we got redistricted, and I'm in the 20th district, and I'm running again. And people sort of asked me a couple of questions. Can you describe what you are, sort of where you stand? And I would call myself a constitutional conservative. And I would tell you that I think most of the problems in our, our nation and in our state is because we've had government that's stretched too far. It's gone beyond the bounds of the Constitution. It has to follow the Constitution and amendments as precisely, and I would call myself sort of a strict constructionist in that regard. Second thing people ask is really what's your legislative agenda? Well, you know, if, if you were going to describe what you're going to be, how people are going to remember you at the end of your career, you know, what would that be? And I'd actually tell you that it's very simple. I'd like there to be fewer laws on the books, fewer regulations when I finish than when I start. I kind of liken this to my own closet at home. Every time I go out and buy a shirt, I bring it home, I throw out two shirts so that my closet doesn't get cluttered. Same thing about legislation. We can have rules, we can have regulations, that's okay. But the problem is we don't ever get rid of them. And our government and our, on a state and local level is getting somewhat overwhelmed and burdened by that. And so what I would propose, anytime I uh, propose a legislation, any sort of regulation, I'm going to propose two that come off the books. Let me tell you a little bit about my family. I'm a father of three sons who've been married for 20 years. And if you think about our anniversary, you know, there are all sorts of things. There's the diamond anniversary, there's the gold anniversary, the paper anniversary. My wife, for the last three years, has been, it's been the jewelry anniversary. I've gotten her, you know, jewelry every time, and then for our 20th anniversary, I did the same thing. For me, the 10th anniversary, if you all play guitar, was the Les Paul anniversary. That was a big one for me. Uh, and the most recent anniversary, which is our 20th, was actually the AR-15 anniversary. <laughs> My wife asked me several months ago our anniversary, and I said, what do you want for our anniversary? And I said, really, actually, I want a, a semi-automatic rifle. Uh, and so she helped me pick it up myself. I got it at the Outpost Armory down in Murfreesboro. Got a six-hour 400. Uh, and that's one of my prides and joys, you know, in, in terms of my weaponry at home. But it's not so much that I got that, but it's the reason why I got that that I wanted to tell you about. It. And I've got three sons. And I think it's very important, with, with all of my sons at least, to try to have something in common. And I know genetically they're all my kids, but boy, I mean, they're as far apart as you can imagine. Some of them like art, some of them like music. It turns out my 14-year-old son likes computers and he likes guns. And so the one thing that we really have in common is our love to shoot. And so I actually got this gun, not so much for me, but I got it so it's something that I can share with my son. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I'm sure most of you here have kids and those of you who have sons probably have been through this. When you go home at night, I, I take call, and in fact, I'm going to have to leave here shortly because I have a case at Hendersonville I have to go do. I see my sons, I say, hey, how you doing? How's your day? They kind of grunt. They say, I love you, and I don't even get anything. I get kind of, you know, this from my, my three sons, not very demonstrative. But with my 14-year-old son, when I say, hey, let's go shooting this weekend, that's when he lights up. It really does give me something to share in common with my son. And so, so that, that's a little bit of the background about who I am, sort, sort of why I have a, a, you know, a love of, of, of guns. Three questions. Okay, constitutional carry. Let's look. Guns and parking lot. Is that, is Guns and parking lot. Okay, let's start with that one. Uh, I support that. Okay, as I said, and it's one of the reasons I said this, I ran two years ago when Douglas Henry and I ran against each other. And one of the big issues then was guns and bars. And that was, I got asked that at almost every stop. And people said, how can you have people carry weapons into the place where they're serving alcohol? Fact is, we're talking permitted gun owners. We're talking to people that follow the rules, people that are the law-abiding citizens of our state. I've got a permit. We had to go, I had to go through a background check. I had to get fingerprinted. These are the very people I'm not worried about having weapons. And so the fact that they could carry them in their car to their place of work, I have no qualms with that whatsoever to support the legislation. Constitutional carry. Constitutional carry. Okay, if you look at the states that actually have constitutional carry, now Vermont is sort of the model state. It, I, as I understand, has never had gun permits. And there are three states over the recent past, I think Arizona, Alaska, and Wyoming, that I think that, that have adopted constitutional carry. Montana has a version of constitutional carry. I do not oppose that. I don't feel compelled. I would not necessarily carry that bill. But if it came down, I would have no qualms with it whatsoever. And then what we call local option, which is a local parks. Local parks. Okay. Uh, I think the state law and the state permit supersedes 
uh, your this, the local ability to prevent guns in uh, local parks. Uh, as Courtney Rogers said before, if you have a posted sign that says you do not carry weapons here, I think it is, it is also an invitation for trouble. And so I have no qualms with that whatsoever. And then open the floor. Okay, and I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Yes, ma'am. Um, at the Green Hills Lake mm -hmm. a couple months ago, when the question was put to you and David Hall, they had a report that they had a couple of guns in the park. You said that you would be okay with the safety bill, but there would right. be compromises. Right. So what are the compromises that you think would have to be? That, that's a good question. Com compromise is a word in politics that, that means a lot of different things. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with the individuals who have permits to carry their guns in their car and keep it in their car at work. I don't think things, as I think Courtney said a minute ago, there are certain exceptions, things like nuclear power plants, things that are national security need to be carved out. Other than that, I'm, in, I'm, I'm solid with other than that. But if there, are, there are a couple, couple specific that I, that I think, you know, military bases, I think are probably a federal issue that we don't speak to. Well, most of us probably don't want that issue. But if they are, been through all the background and all that and fingerprinted right. as you right. said, but you don't get fingerprinted for the permit to tell us it. Did, did, are you, did you not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,